Welcome to a day of prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. Good morning. My name is Promise, and you're listening to Day of Prayer's Morning Bible Study. We're glad you could join us, but before we get into the Lord, let's open up in prayer. Lord, I just thank you for today. I just thank you for coming into our midst and just revealing your words to us, Lord. And Lord, I also just thank you for giving your gifts to us, Lord, so that we can use them for, so we can use them in the manner that you intended them to be used, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, good morning and welcome, everybody. We're glad to have you with us as we continue to study the book of Acts. Uh, we just ask that if you're blessed by this, that you would like the episode, that you subscribe on this and any number of the platforms you can find a day of prayer. And then also that you share it with someone else so they too can be blessed, but most importantly, Grow in relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. And we thank you for doing so. Amen. We thank Amen. you for your help. It is a, definitely a blessing. and Yes, we thank you for for doing so and helping us advance in these rankings and algorithms and all that. So that way, more of the word can go out to more people across the four corners of the earth. Amen. So, so thank you for partnering with us to do that. So. Um, let's get to the word, shall we? Yes. And we are going to reread. We're in Acts chapter 3. And we're going to reread verses 12 through 26. So can I get a volunteer to cover down on that section of scripture, please? I will. All right, Layla. So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why look so intently at us as though by our own power or good godliness we had made this man walk? <laughs> The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just and asked for a murderer to be granted to you and killed the Prince of Life whom God raised from the dead, of which we are witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, The faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Yet now, brethren, I know that you did it in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But those things which God foretold by the mouth of all his prophets, that the Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you before, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of his of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said to the fathers, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. Him we shall hear in all things, whatever he says to you. And it shall be that every soul who will not hear that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. Yes, and all the prophets from Samuel and those who follow, as many as have spoken, have also foretold these days. You are sons of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying to Abraham, And in your seed all the families of the earth shall be blessed. To you first, God having raised up his servant Jesus, sent him to bless you and turning every one of you from your iniquities. Amen. Amen. So at this time, the floor is open. For each of you to share what the Holy Spirit speaking to you and to ask any questions that you have. So, who would like to begin? I think Promise would. All right, Promise. Okay, first I wanted to talk about... Um, verse 19 where it says, Repent therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Mm-hmm. And so the Lord's talking to me about how that, and he reminded me of the people that go, oh, after they've repented that they just practically threw a pity party. Mm-hmm. And so the Lord's telling me that, what that, 
when you're constantly trying to looking at what's behind you and see what you've done in the past, you're not able to move forward because you're living in the past. Mm-hmm. And so the Lord's telling me that, wait, and then to go with that part, verse 21, where, it's, where it says, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things, which Christ has spoken by the mouth of all its holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said to the fathers, wait, sorry, just verse 21. And okay. And how I was talking about the holy prophets, how they prophesied about the Lord. Mm-hmm. And so the Lord was telling me that if they're too busy trying to relive the past, then they won't be able to prophesy about the future. Mm. Amen. And so the Lord is telling me that with the fruit, with the gifts of the Spirit, what the Lord is giving us, so plants are supposed to grow upwards. They're supposed to be growing up. And if someone's too busy, if a plant turns around and starts growing downwards, that plant's going to die. So you mean like the the part that should be catching the sun that usually has a flower on it. The root system is made to grow downward, but the part that is above ground is meant to grow upward for the most parts or spread out over the top of the surface of the ground. Okay. And then if it tries to bury itself in the dirt, that doesn't work for it? Yes, it's going to die. Okay. Okay. And so the floor is telling me that it's the same with this instance. So there's a part of us that should remember um, God in our past. And that's why he references, this is the God of your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They are clearly in the chronological sequence in the past of these, these people that he's talking to. But that's different than reveling in the past and reliving the past, remembering God. He always tells us to remember him. Right. And to yes. exalt his name and give him praise for the things that he's done and to glorify him and be thankful. He always tells us to do that. But he doesn't say live in the past in your mind like you're keeping it alive as though it's today, except for remembering him and then taking your remembrance of him and your gratitude towards him and moving forward with him. Because he's always doing He's always moving. He's always bringing forth life and growth and restoration and healing and a, a forward or upward movement towards him and the things that he's called us to. He is a finisher, mm-hmm. not a, I did it one time and it's over, but not bringing things into completion. So amen. Go ahead, sweetheart. It's in the Lord's, the Lord's remind me of, with that, when we're moving ahead with the Lord, that he's going to give us, that he's going to bless us. Mm-hmm. And how that, if we're always living our past, not reliving our past, and not moving forward and going, Lord, I acknowledge that you're inside my past, and moving forth, the Lord, then you're not able to receive those things. It's really hard. Um, you could liken it to someone driving a car or trying to walk down the street. If they're walking facing the opposite of direction of their movement, it, it that greatly challenges their forward progress in the direction that they want to go. Likewise, when someone's driving and they're looking solely in their rearview mirror and never look out the windshield um, the way the car is going, that, that's hazardous to them to drive that way. We're supposed to drive predominantly looking out of the windshield and occasionally glancing into our rearview mirror as appropriately. So... God always wants us to give him honor for the things that he's already done and use that to build our faith towards the things that he will do. And he said he will do for us. Right. Yes. Yes. All right. So you get an example would be Abraham when the father asked him to sacrifice his son. He reasoned and said, well, you brought him from the dead, basically, because Abraham was an older man and his body was past the age of being fruitful to reproduce. So he said, well, in that sense, you brought him from the dead to begin with. So whatever you're going to do now, if you did that, you can do this. So he used looking at his past with God appropriately and remembered God's faithfulness and used that for his faith today to grow and be active so he could move forward and obey God. And 
reap the benefit, whatever their reward is that God said. Well, we know that's the Messiah coming through his his ultimate lineage. And now we had a we because of his action, we had an opportunity for salvation to come into the world. God used him as a faithful man to open the door for his plan. Um, but he didn't go now. Well, last time you remember, you told me to come out and it's been hot in this desert. Lord, mm, the people, they weren't friendly with me. You know, they took my woman, they took my woman away, my wife and married her. And, you know, then I, he didn't do that. He didn't use that past to find the negative and complain against God. But he looked to remember God for all the good that he did, had done. And God had never done him or anyone else wrong because he's only a good God. He's a good God and he only does good things. What else you got? That was it. Okay. Mm. I do remember what I was going to say, honey, um, oh, at well, the please. end of the previous podcast. Oh, please say it, honey. Sure. Um, thank you. So we were talking about um, this, the sermon that Peter is given giving. And if we remember John the Baptist, when he came, he said, repent and be baptized, mm-hmm. right? He was the son of, um, a Levite, a high priest who was working in the temple and, um, was a harbinger, if you will, pointing to the way that God was going to work and operate now, mm-hmm. which was through the Lord Jesus Christ, Right. Yes. Yes. But his message was repent and be baptized. And he said, the Messiah is coming. And, you know, whose sandals I'm not worthy to unlatch. And I'm, you know, um, he's going to baptize you with fire um, after that. And he was pointing to Jesus, but he was still, (laughs) thank you, he was still um, a transition, if you will. And here he's saying, now you guys have to repent and accept Jesus versus which he thought before, it's not enough just to say, Lord, I'm sorry, and um, be baptized, you know what I mean? And not necessarily pointed directly to the Lord Jesus Christ, the person of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. That's, that's not sufficient. That was preparing their heart to be able to receive him. John's baptism was preparing the hearts of the people to receive the Messiah, right? Yes. So now Peter, because Jesus has been um, crucified and raised from the dead, and now is seated at the right hand of the Father, saying, hey, you got to come in through this door right here. There's no more the, the blood of sacrifices, the bulls and goats. You can't do that anymore. It's not just a water baptism, John's baptism. That's not sufficient. You got to come through the blood. You got to come through the door of Jesus Christ. Because they were like, well, I've been doing good things. I came here to worship God, right? The, yes, the people yes. that he spoke to in, in his initial sermon were those that had come to serve the Lord. They were holy and devout men. And now he's in the temple and these people are going, well, I've been doing holy and devout things. And clearly I have some relationship with the Lord because I'm, I'm here, right? I'm, I'm doing what seems right, but he's going, no, here's the connection. You got to come through Jesus. Um, also there's an aspect of people who think when they see God moving, they go, I don't really like that version. God, can you try a different way? Can, can you come a different way? Can you deliver me a different way? And God's like, no, here's my door. Um, when you think about what's the, the Israeli um, <clears throat> national song? Hektifa. Uh-huh. And in their song, they are still looking for the Messiah to come the first time. Where it's like, we don't, we don't like that Jesus. Hmm. We don't like that Jesus. Messiah, we're looking for someone else. We're looking for another way. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. yes. Okay. So there is no other way. So that's why Peter's going, no, it was him right here. It's him right here. Yes, you might have missed it the first time, but you need to know and understand clearly this is the way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Yes, you crucified him. Yes, you asked for a murderer. You, you missed his initial presentation but he's not going to offer another opportunity in the way of someone different he's not sending someone different and so their excitement at seeing this miracle happen through peter brought the present oh, okay so it wasn't that jesus okay phew you know he was doing miracles but if he, this other man is doing miracles maybe we don't have to look at him 
Jesus, the Messiah, right? Maybe yes. you don't have to think of him like that. Here's another person doing it. So look, see, we're valid in crucifying that one. And then the Lord took that and brought it around and said, no, here's the door. Jesus is still the door. There is not another way. It's him. Did that make sense? Yes. <laughs> yes. So sometimes when the Lord comes to us, you know, and I can, I can look at application and how it looks now. Yes, I've received Jesus as Messiah, but sometimes he's like, well, you know, I'd like to use this situation right here. This is how I want to bless you. And I go, well, oh, Lord, um, well, uh, you know, I kind of thought maybe it would look like this, or I would prefer if it came like that. And the Lord's like, no, <laughs> this one right here, this is the way that I would have it go right now. So yield to me and submit, and we can carry on down the road, but you're not going to change. I'm not going to change God's mind with what I want him to do or the way that I think he should come to me. He's God and he comes the way that he chooses. So in all things, you know, just remembering Jesus is the Messiah. He's the door. And then as he continues to bring about growth in our lives and continues to mature us, he's going to choose the pathway that he wants to do it. And we should not refuse him because saying, God, I'll take you as my Lord and savior to keep me out of hell, but I won't take you as my Lord and savior over my marriage. Mm. or I'll, I'll take you to keep me out of hell and maybe you can touch my marriage, but don't tell me about my kids or don't touch my finances. Mm. Mm. Well, we have to hold a right perspective. And mm -hmm. just so as we were reading over this, I was, and I know it says very plainly where they were, right? They're in the temple mm -hmm. and specifically in whose portico? Solomon's. Solomon's. Okay. Which is a reference to the first temple, right? What okay. yes. was typically known as Solomon's temple. What did Solomon do with the temple before they entered in? He dedicated it to the Lord. Okay. And he did that through what? Prayer. Through prayer. Amen. Yes, he did that through prayer. Does anybody know what he discussed in that prayer? Mm. It's in it's in Second Chronicles chapter six. Actually it begins in verse twelve. There is a lot of prayer and mention in his prayer concerning people turning from their iniquity, the Lord hearing their prayer, and blessing them. But he makes this, he asks this question in the beginning. Verse 18, actually. Right? After reminding the Lord about the covenant he made, the Lord made with David, Solomon's father, right? King David. Yes. But he asks this question at the beginning of verse 18. But will God indeed dwell with men on the earth? Right? Yes. Okay. Then he says, Behold, heaven and the heaven. Wait. Behold, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain you. How much less this temple which I have built. So right there. He, he's saying there, it's not quite right. Right? Yes. There, there's a, a fly in the ointment as it were. Right? How can this temple that I built, this man-made structure, contain the Lord? Right? Yes. What? Before we got into Acts, the Lord had us discuss and study out the Lord's house. Right? And we were specifically yes. looking at the tabernacle at of the meeting, tabernacle. the tent of meeting. The t exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. And all the furnishings of, of that. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. The desire always, as we clearly pointed out, repeatedly in that study, was how the Lord always desired to live with his people amongst us, to have that relationship. But that's his first question, right, that he asks here in 18. Well, but will God indeed, or it says, if you really look at that, the indeed is in reality. Will God in reality dwell with men on the earth, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. But then what's he 
throughout the rest of this prayer, he is continually discussing repentance, turning from their ways, right? Yes. All the different ways that they've sinned, but turning from those ways, turning back to the Lord, and being blessed or refreshed, right? Yes. Isn't that exactly what Peter's teaching here? He even gets to a point, and this is uh, something that, and, and honey, you brought this up. What is uh, even the nation of Israel looking for? What is the world? What is the church, the body of Christ? What have we been searching and yearning for for a long time? The answer is an outpouring of the Lord, of his Holy Spirit on the earth. Simplified is to say revival, hmm. right? Yes. yes. Okay. Well, Second Chronicles seven fourteen is a, a scripture that's been used and prayed many times for revival, right? If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, that's one, pray to seek my face, three, and four, turn from their wicked ways, then I, right, the Lord is saying, then I'll hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin, and I'll heal their land. And my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayer made in this place. In this place. They're standing in the temple on Solomon's portico, right? Yes. yes. Again, that's the second temple now that they're standing in because Solomon's temple was destroyed and it was rebuilt, right? Mm -hmm. And you can read yes. Ezra, Nehemiah, Haggai, Zechariah um, to, to understand more of that, right? But in... I'll say Peter's teaching, right? Yes. He's making the difference known. This, And we've said this study in Acts that the Lord directed us to is that transition, that extension of the temple where it transitions from it being about a building to we being his temple, right? Yes. And, and he's saying in here, he's reminding them, hey, look, Moses and all the prophets were all discussing Jesus. They were all pointing you to Jesus. Listen to what he says, right? Yes. yes. In full, in everything. In John 17, the high priestly prayer, what does Jesus say? Which part, baby? Uh, number, i got to find the verse. I was okay. getting a little excited there. Okay. okay. Forgive me. All right. And... Um, <laughs> Uh, sorry, excuse me. So, verse 22 and 23. And the glory which you gave me, I've given them, that they may be one just as we are one. I in them, in you and me, that they may be made, what? Perfect. In one. Right? Yes. Didn't we just read about that in the earlier episode? Dealing with uh, Luke 6 and what Jesus was teaching them? which is the opposite of how a natural mind thinks. Natural people yes. dealing with their natural mind is the complete opposite. We said a disciple is never greater than their teacher. But when they are perfect, they will be like their teacher, right? Yes. yes. Peter's acknowledging, hey, look, now the Lord lives and dwells in me. We're witnesses. His Holy Spirit lives and dwells in me, right? That's essentially what he's getting at. But he's he's also declaring it, if you will, right? Because he's teaching the people. And Paul makes a, a similar statement, right? Do you not know that your body is, in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, right? Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You're not your own, but you were bought with a price, right? Yes. yes. Which is how we get, I'll say, the outpouring of the Spirit, which is how we get blessed. The Lord already set it up so that we can turn from our iniquity, but we have to pray, right? So yes. they're, they're saying it, and I'll say, and this is a, an amazing thing, like this, this transition from, they're standing in the temple ministering, but teaching the people that their body is the temple, that Christ set this up, and this is what the Lord, our Heavenly Father, meant from the beginning, was to live and dwell in us amongst his people. Does everybody get that? Yes. yes. I know it's a lot. Any questions? This is it's kind of heavy. I get it. No, I don't have any questions. 
Me oh, neither. I thought know, it was can, great. Can we eat some meat of the word? <laughs> we don't always have to suckle the milk. Um, True. Yes. And, and deem meat burdensome to eat or chew. We, we want to hear the, the true and the deep things of God. So, so this is saying, and, and, and I bring this up, right? Because what has been happening with the Lord saying, hey, remain in Jerusalem until you receive what was promised, the promise, right? Which was the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on them, right? Mm-hmm. The Holy Spirit yes. being freely given. It was about revival. It was about times of refreshing. And did we not, have we not continued to read that it was happening? Numbers yes. were being added to, well, let's say the first church, right? It's historically, um, biblical history. What it's referred to, this is the first church. Mm-hmm. Numbers were being added daily. Yep, there were persecutions. There sure were. Or we're about to read of some Mm -hmm. here in the next chapter. But the Lord was still moving. He was not being quenched because his people, those that had chosen to follow him above everything, didn't matter what man said, right? Mm -hmm. They chose to be led by his Holy Spirit and to demonstrate their love for the Lord by their obedience and their faithfulness to Him, they continued and did what they were led to do. So for us, for the, for the church, for the body, for the bride of Christ, we must be led by the Lord, by His Holy Spirit. We must be obedient to what He's telling us to say and showing us to do. In everything. That's what matters. We want to, if, if we truly desire to see change and an outpouring of His Holy Spirit, which is already beginning, it's already begun, but if we truly want to see that in the, the fullness of, I'll say, the Lord's power and might moving throughout the earth, then we must be obedient in all things to not quench Him, to not fight against Him, to give him place to move and provide opportunity for everyone else to come into relationship with him. Amen. Anyone? Anyone else have anything they want to share or add? No, mine wouldn't be fast enough. (laughs) Okay. Is it on this section of scripture? Yes. Well, let's cover that in the next episode. All right? Okay. Okay. So, let's pause there for today. And with that, can I get a volunteer to close us out in prayer, please? I will. All right, LaCharles. Lord, we just thank you for being who you are, Lord, and that you're consistent. And Lord, we also just thank you that you give us the same ability to be consistent in everything, Lord. That we can show your love no matter what happens to us, Lord. That you give us the same Holy Spirit. And Lord, we also just thank you that we can be a light to those around us, Lord. That we don't have to respond like everybody else would, Lord, but that way you can stand out and do what you want done in the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Well, we love you. God bless you. And have a wonderful day. We hope you've enjoyed listening to A Day of Prayer's Morning Bible Study. This year, Pastor John and I are believing for 1,000 new partners to believe God with us and join in the work of the ministry. God is doing great things through a day of prayer, and we want you to be a part. If the Lord is placed on your heart to partner with us, please contact us online at adayofprayer.org. Click on the menu and select partner. Complete the form, and we'd love to hear from you. Thank you again. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to A Day of Prayer. We trust the Lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with Christ. Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org, where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, take care and God bless you.